President Trump shaking up his administration's top ranks once again, replacing White House National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster with John Bolton, a former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, known for his hawkish views. Let's get the details now from Bloomberg News editor Jody Schneider. So, Jody, we're already hearing some pushback from the Democrats on this move. Yes, um, John Bolton is uh, somewhat of a contentious choice. He was contentious years ago. Uh, President Bush had named him, he was part of his administration, and he named him to to be a um, UN ambassador and actually ended up um, making it a recess appointment because he was afraid of uh, a confirmation fight. And then when the Senate uh, went Democratic in 2006, uh, he left because he knew he wouldn't have gotten confirmation at that point. So he's been a contentious um, a figure for, for decades in Washington. This is clearly a move to the right in foreign policy for the administration um, by um, firing uh, Rex Tillerson and putting Mike Pompeo in his place, and now John Bolton instead of H.R. McMaster. This is clearly people who uh, don't want to negotiate on Iran, who are taking, who have taken in the past a very hard line on North Korea. Yeah. John Bolton himself has had statements that were you know, quite contentious, quite uh, tough on North Korea. Comes at an interesting time with those North Korea talks. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you uh, you mentioned that, Jody, because what do you make of the timing of this move? Yeah, I think the administration, President Trump clearly is, is sending a statement that he wants there to be voices uh, in line with his on foreign policy, that he wants it to be a hawkish foreign policy kind of uh, administration. And, it, and th this means that there were these talks that he wants to have with North Korea probably will be tough. And it comes also as uh, in May he has to make a decision on Iran, on the Iran nuclear agreement. And this looks more and more like they, the U.S. will be or he will be recommending that they walk away from this agreement. John Bolton shares that view. Mike Pompeo shares that view. So it's clearly a, a move um, you know, away from that. Also, it's an interesting timing. We're all talking about these moves and what's going on at the White House uh, rather than uh, the Robert Mueller investigation. This is mm. uh, seen by some as somewhat of a distraction, uh, kind of shake things up in the White House, and then we're all talking about that and about the tariffs rather than the investigation. Uh, and, you know, we had Mark Chandler on just a moment ago who said, look, you know, this isn't a trade war. We're making too much out of, you know, these headlines. In your view, I mean, has a trade war started? Well, it is interesting. Some say it's a, I heard Mark in that, some say it's a trade skirmish or it's, you know, uh, maybe a prelude to a trade war. But these are serious amounts of, of tariffs we're talking about. Um, President Trump is talking about as much as $60 billion in tariffs. The uh, Chinese are already talking about $3 billion and they're going to the WTO, um, say, you know, they want the WTO to weigh in now. And this comes on top of the aluminum and steel tariffs that, of course, are not targeted only at China, but certainly. Certainly, China is, is a target of those. So this is a lot of uh, duties, a lot of tariffs, a lot of blocking of or attempts to block um, uh, and make it tougher for uh, each, each trading partner to do trade in that area. Um, I don't know if you call it a trade war, but it's certainly, uh, it's certainly uh, leading in that direction. And we'll just have to see what the effects are on both, uh, both the economies of, of, and the prices that consumers will pay uh, as a result of these things.